Welcome back. In order to get our Raspberry Pi to behave in a manner that is DVR-like, we must install some software on it, starting, of course, with the image of the Raspberry Pi OS. For a rolling 48-hour DVR, you're going to want at least 256 gigabytes on your SD card. To enable SSH on the Pi, we're going to create a blank file named SSH in the root directory of the boot volume. And with that, our SD card is ready to be transferred over to the Raspberry Pi and booted on up. This shot of me doing just that is brought to you by the software we are about to install. On a Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 gigabytes of RAM, we have really good performance and the video quality is fine. Uh, every once in a while there is a little bit of a skip, I've noticed. On a Raspberry Pi uh, 4 with 8 gigabytes of RAM, like we have on the forward-facing cam camera here, uh, it never skips. It's, it's just rock solid. Now that we're connected to the network, let's plug in the monitor cable. And then finally, we'll grab the power cable. Plug that bad boy in. And we're up and running. We're cooking with gas. Check it out. Boot screen. So if you've done this before, you know the drill. The first time through, it resizes the file system, and then it reboots. And uh, once it starts up, we're going to name our machine, put in a password, and stuff like that. Once we know our IP address, we can just switch back over to our Ubuntu desktop and use SSH from here on out. The first thing I like to do is disable bracketed text so I can just drag and drop stuff into the terminal as I need to. The second thing I like to do is to paste my public key into the authorized hosts file in the .ssh directory, which essentially allows me to log in directly without using a password. Okay, now let's log out and log back in again and allow all of that to take effect. Next up, of course, the obligatory sudo apt update, followed, of course, by the obligatory sudo apt upgrade. I can't believe I even have to remind you of this at this point, but the next thing, of course, that you should do is run raspy config and do your basic housekeeping and maintenance to get yourself started. I like to name everything Stanley. Once we've got everything sorted, we exit and reboot. Now, before we can install the software that we need to build the software that we need to build the software that will be our DVR, uh, we're going to need to install some software. Specifically, get libssl dev, package config, gcc, you know, the good stuff. Next, we install Rust, because Newbound is written in Rust, and once that's installed, we can install Newbound. Newbound is like your... Hello World project for the Internet of Things. It gives you a web service. It lets you connect to a network of peers. It gives you an integrated development environment, and it lets you publish apps and distribute apps and updates to the peers that you've connected to your personal network. Shameless plug notwithstanding, it's pretty cool, and I'm awfully proud of it, and you should check it out. Once we've got Newbound installed, we'll just create a systemd unit file so that it'll automatically run Newbound for us as a service. If you run Newbound on an operating system with a desktop environment installed, it'll automatically launch a browser and log you in. When Newbound starts up, it automatically generates some config files with some default values in it. 
we can take a look at those files and we can find the port number that we can connect to it on and what the administrative password is. Armed with our newfound information, we easily defeat the login page. Now that we're logged in, we'll go ahead and install the DVR software as a library into our new bound installation. So when we go to the development app, it should now show up as a library, but it does not. I think we need to restart the new bound service. Now the camera library that we just installed contains some commands that are written in Rust. And once we've restarted and logged back in, we'll need to go into the development application, pull up that library, and recompile it. Then we'll need to restart the application and log back in again. Now we just need to launch the camera application, open the application preferences, save the application preferences, then pop over to the terminal where we edit the application preferences to uh, change the resolution to 1080p. Then we restart the application. At this point, we realize that FFmpeg is not installed. So we install FFmpeg. It takes a long time. A really, really, really long time. 40 minutes is 2,400 seconds, and rendered at 1,000x, it transcends the ability to be displayed. Nevertheless, we have endured it, and now that we've given the software what it wants, it will do what it's supposed to. Look at that. So we'll go ahead and turn on the DVR and activate motion detection as well. Stick around after the break for the exciting conclusion of this three-part series in which I go through the usage of the DVR software for our brand new Raspberry Pi high-quality DVR.